Well, physiotherapists work um, right from the acute care hospital. So typically, if somebody has a stroke, they may go to the emergency room, be admitted to uh, an acute care hospital. Some people are actually kept um, in the emergency under observation for a bit and then discharged home. But most people, I think, go the route of the acute care hospital, then probably inpatient rehabilitation, outpatient rehabilitation. The physiotherapist starts working with a stroke survivor in the acute care facility. I think, generally speaking, so how much exercise you do early on, especially in that acute care phase, really depends on how large your stroke is, how stable you are medically, whether the stroke is believed to be continuing to evolve or not. At that time, any intensive exercise wouldn't be appropriate. But um, certainly the role of the physiotherapist at that time would be um, looking at positioning of the person in the bed, making sure that they're being positioned adequately, that they don't develop joint stiffness, uh, muscle contractures, um, or joint pain. Shoulder pain is a very common um, side effect to stroke. So there's a lot of preventative work that happens that the physiotherapist is responsible for in the early phases, as well as beginning to mobilize, help the person get up, sitting over the side of the bed, moving from the bed uh, to a chair, um, possibly standing, depending on the level of, of the patient. What I say to people here is when they come to see me twice a week on average, I, and this is an outpatient facility, basically when they're with me, I'm teaching them things that they need to be able to do when they're on their own. Um, so I'll teach them exercises to practice at home. Um, I will encourage them to participate in any opportunity at home, social opportunity, challenge them to try to do things for themselves at home. And each time they come back to see me, it's an opportunity for us to debrief and see how things are going. And if somebody um, had said, well, you know, I really want to be able to walk down and get the mail from my front lobby, um, and that's something I'd really like to work on, uh, if they come back to me and say, you know, I could only get halfway there, you know, we talk about, well, why is that and how can we make it easier for, or how can we help you to build on that, being able to walk that distance, for instance. Um, so the visits to the outpatient clinic are really about um, their teaching exercises, things that they can do on their own, debriefing about how things are going. But then on top of that, it's a chance for our clients, our patients to push the envelope when they're with us because we can create a safe environment for them to do that. And, um, you know, we have special facilitation techniques that we can use to help them experience normal movement in a way that they can't on their own as yet. So that's another role that we play in, in the outpatient. It's a partnership, partnership with the patient that we work with and with the rest of the team, and we all have input. The patient is the person who knows themself, themselves and knows what he or she wants to get out of rehabilitation and wants to do with the rest of his or her life. Um, and the team, we're the ones who have the background to understand what, what is doable at each stage of recovery. And so, as I say, it's negotiation. And there will be things that the speech therapist might suggest, for instance, that the physiotherapist will help um, promote and uh, reinforce. Um, and so, yes, we work as a team. We, um, we see people here um, usually for about, oh, three, anywhere from three, four months, well, roughly three to four months, I would say, is the average. Um, and we are an outpatient setting, and so typically people are with us certainly within that first year of the stroke. We work with people until uh, we see that they're making some good progress in their goals, but they won't necessarily have reached their goals by the time they're with us, finished with us. We see ourselves as helping them make that good start and as providing them with strategies and um, tools, exercises that they can continue to do after they leave us to continue to improve. So when you think about treating a stroke patient, there are two aspects to the treatment. There's a remediation approach, which is where we try to facilitate that motor relearning. 
um, and also so we're working on uh, re-establishing motor pathways, strengthening muscle, addressing the impairments that happen as a result of stroke. And then the other side of the coin is compensation. So we don't do all remediation, we don't do all compensation. There's a mixture between the two and what that mixture looks like will depend on what stage the person is in their rehabilitation and it's also a it, it's also based on negotiation with the patient because you may get someone for instance if you're looking at working in the kitchen someone will say who love to cook I don't want to go near the kitchen until I can use my right hand th the way I used to and do things the way I used to so okay we spend our time pr doing practice and never really getting in there and doing anything, um, never really engaging in that part of their life. It's kind of like putting their life on hold until they're back to the way they were before. Whereas perhaps a better mix is still work on strategies to improve the impairments of that affected arm, but let's also teach you a few compensatory strategies, adaptive equipment, things you can use in the kitchen so that you can work safely even now and get on with your life, participate in cooking family dinners, you know, um, celebratory dinners, that sort of thing. Oftentimes when people come here to this outpatient facility, they may have already had a home assessment by a physiotherapist, an occupational therapist from a previous setting, say an inpatient uh, facility, um, in which case it may not be necessary for us to make, or for me to make another visit at that point to look at home safety per se. There are people who haven't had that as yet, so I would definitely, at some point along the way, I think it's important that a healthcare practitioner, physiotherapist, occupational therapist makes a home visit to look at home safety. Um, but having said that, there still may be people who come to see me who've already had a home safety assessment, but have identified some sort of goal at home where I really need to see the setting a little bit more to really appreciate what the obstacles are. Um, and also, at home, we can have a very good session where I can teach the caregiver and the patient how to, strategies that they can use in that home environment. So a home visit would be in order. I think, um, I mean, first and foremost, it's really critical that the caregiver t looks after him or herself, takes opportunities to do things that give them pleasure, that they enjoy without feeling guilty about leaving their partner behind for those activities. And that often means trying to enlist the help of other family and friends from time to time, because if they get burnt out, then they're really not going to be in any position to be of any help. Um, I think now here at our organization, we have family conferences. We include the family um, every step of the way. I encourage um, caregivers to come in to any or all therapy sessions if they so choose. Sometimes I might say, you know what, you've been coming in here every time, you need a break, why don't you go get a coffee and I'll let you know if anything comes up that we need to discuss further. Um, it really is, and so, but we encourage caregivers to come in at least some of the time to see what we're doing so that they really start to understand the issues and I think it helps them realize sometimes the level of impairment so they're not so hard on their partner. But also too it gives them some very specific um, suggestions of things that they can do to help and I think that that's a big plus. There's stroke prevention, primary prevention, which would be preventing the first one. Secondary prevention, yes. We um, here at Toronto Rehab do have a stroke education series and um, we talk about secondary prevention and risk factor modification. And certainly fitness is something that is really big right now um, in my field of physiotherapy. And we do... Um, we encourage our patients to get out there and get their fitness levels up, whether it's on a stationary bike, um, semi-recumbent bike, uh, maybe it's a pedals that they pedal, maybe we just encourage them to walk in their corridor if they can. It, obviously it has to be something safe, it has to be um, based on a specific assessment of that individual to know what, what is best, but we do know that stroke, people who've had stroke, um, 
have all the same benefits from physical fitness training as the general population and so why shouldn't they have that um, opportunity and it used to be that we focused more on just trying to deal with the impairments of the stroke and get them back to some sort of sedentary lifestyle well now we're saying you know what even if you're in a wheelchair is there something we can do to get your fitness level up so that your weight's controlled better so that your blood sugars are better controlled if you're diabetic so that your energy levels and your sense of well-being and all those things that come from a fitness program that the rest of the population benefits from the stroke population can benefit from as well a really important thing to realize is that anything you do in your everyday life is exercise and every time you challenge yourself to do more for yourself at home do more around the house uh, go out walking this is all exercise and it's valid and valuable. Um, it could be folding laundry, it could be doing the vacuuming, um, it could be playing with your grandchildren.